Anaphylactic Shock, written by Ink in My Heart and On the Page, read by Eleanor Elizabeth. Summary. An Avengers training session ends up going horribly wrong when Tony remembers that Clint uses knockout drugs laced with peppermint. I shouldn't have invited him. Tony scrubbed a hand down his face, anxiety lingering under his skin. It'll be fine, Rhodey assured him, clapping a hand on Tony's shoulder. Besides, it'll be good for him. He can learn a few things. While Tony could agree that it would be beneficial for Peter, it didn't stop his stomach from churning at the thought. It was the first time the Avengers had returned as a group since the whole mess with the Accords. Tony had nearly killed himself working on the Accords, getting them to a place where everyone was happy. Well, no longer willing to kill each other over them. There was still a link of tension with the team, and it had been Natasha's idea to have a training session. We'll never get back to what we were if we keep avoiding one another, she said wisely. Boss, Spider-Man has arrived, Friday's voice filled the gym. Bug Boy was invited, Clint asked, his face stoic as usual. Tony could see the small clench of his jaw, though, and he felt his own jaw clenching. Spider-Man is part of the team, Rhodey said easily, his hand squeezing Tony's shoulder in a warning not to start something. Keeping his mouth shut, Tony turned to face the door to the gym. He didn't have to wait long before Peter came bounding into the room. Glad he was in Spider-Man uniform. When Tony had invited Peter to the training session, the kid had been initially excited. After a few questions, though, Peter had started to turn serious. Do I have to tell them who I am? No, kid, Tony promised. Not until you're ready. It seemed today was not the day Peter would be telling the Avengers who he was. The thought gave Tony some comfort, and he breathed a little easier. Hey, Mr. Stark. Hi, Mr. Cardinal Rhodes, sir. You can call me Rhodey, kid, Rhodey smirked. Peter nodded his masked head rapidly. Okay, Mr. Rhodey. Tony barked out a laugh, clapping Peter on the shoulder. Glad you can make it. It was this or homework, Peter shrugged. Tony narrowed his eyes. Are you skipping homework right now? Peter looked at Tony, his eyes wide in the mask. No. Tony shook his head and pinched the bridge of his nose. And this is why your aunt hates me. She doesn't hate you, Peter insisted. She's just appropriately concerned. That doesn't help, kid, Tony sighed, dropping his hand. The kid was going to turn him grey. Sorry, Peter winced. I promise I'll do my homework right after this. I'm almost finished anyway. Come on, Mr. Stark, don't make me leave. This is so awesome. This, Reddy said gleefully, is karma. And I'm so glad I'm here to witness it. Tony scowled at his best friend. Before he could say anything, Steve was calling them together. As he walked over to join the others, Tony kept a hand on Peter's shoulder to ground himself. He knew the kid could take care of himself, but Tony couldn't shake the feeling that he shouldn't be here. All right, everyone, Steve said, gazing around all of them. Let's get started. We'll run drill number 18. Clint, Scott, Natasha, you're the opponents. I'll observe this one, Rhodey said. Tony caught Sam's flinch and his eyes flickered down to Rhodey's braces. Sure, princess, Tony grinned easily. You need your beauty rest. Whatever, Tony Stank, Rhodey grinned back, punching Tony's arm lightly. Tony Stank, Peter repeated, a gleeful note in his tone. Don't even think it under ruse, Tony warned, glaring at Peter. Wouldn't dream of it, sir. You could hear the grin in Peter's voice, and Tony fought the urge to smile. Tony, Steve prompted. Friday, run the drill, Tony called out. Starting the drill, Friday said. The gym exploded into chaos as drones started rising into the air. With a quick tap at his chest, Tony's suit materialised around him as Rhodey headed off the gym floor. Hitch a ride under ruse, Tony said, as he shot off the roof. He knew Peter had attached a web to him as he felt a slight tug of resistance. He felt the moment Peter let go and swerved around, finding the kid perched upside down on the roof and crawling across it. That isn't any less creepy, Sam commented as he swooped past. It didn't take Tony long to pick up on the fact that Clint was targeting Peter. Arrow after arrow followed the kid, but never touching him. Peter dodged them easily, webbing up arrows so Clint couldn't retrieve them, while simultaneously webbing up the drones. The kid moved instinctively, and Tony found himself beaming with pride under his mask. As the drill went on, the drones were taken out, and it was only Scott, Natasha, and Clint who were left. As Tony took a swipe at Clint, he caught sight of the arrows and froze. He had forgotten. How could he have forgotten? The arrows that Clint were using were laced with a knockout drug, ones that contained peppermint, which Peter was severely allergic to. Clint, stop! Tony called out. The shout had caused everyone to pause, including Peter. Clint released his arrow and it sped through the air. Peter moved too slowly. He hissed as the arrow nicked him on the thigh. Peter swung down to the floor, stumbling on the landing. Tony landed beside him, quickly grabbing Peter and holding him up. Mr. Stark? Peter's voice came out wobbly. Rody! Tony shouted, his suit falling away. Medic kit, now! On it, Rody shouted back. Tony? Steve asked, coming forward. It's just a flesh wound. He can continue, right? Mr. Stark! Peter gasped. I don't feel so good. Peter's knees buckled, and Tony carefully lowered him to the floor. It's all right under ruse. I got you. Tony! Steve tried again, but Tony ignored him. Tones! Rody shouted. Tony turned briefly to see the medical kit come flying at him. He snatched it out of the air and set it down heavily. 
He ripped open the back, searching frantically for the EpiPen he had put in there. Is it... Peter gasped. Shit, Tony swore. With fumbling hands, he ripped off Peter's mask, tossing it away. The kid's face was turning blue and purple as he struggled to breathe. His eyes were wide and frantic, and his throat swelled. Grabbing the EpiPen, Tony shoved it into Peter's thigh and pressed the button. When it was empty, he did another one, and another, and another. Tony, that's too many, Bruce knelt beside Tony, reaching for the EpiPen, but Tony battered that man's hand away. Not for him, Tony said. Enhanced metabolism, he burns through it faster than Cap. What's going on? Steve asked, hovering worriedly over them. He's going into anaphylactic shock, Tony explained, as he did yet another EpiPen, from the peppermint in Clint's arrows. Shit, Clint swore. Tony ignored the spy, keeping the angry retort he wanted to make firmly inside him. That wouldn't help Peter. Rody reached him, carefully kneeling beside Tony. Is it working? Peter gasped in a breath, colour slowly returning to his face. The swelling was still there, but Tony could see that it was starting to go down. Tony let out a breath. Yeah, you're okay, Underoos. I got you. Mrs. Stark? Peter slurred, his eyes fluttering shut. Did I win? Tony let out a breath, his shoulders slumping. This kid. Yeah, you won. Woo. Peter managed a small fist pump before his arms slumped back beside him. I'm still better than homework. Yeah, say that as you recover in med bay. Tony tossed the empty EpiPen away and slid his hands under Peter. No. Peter whined, but wrapped his arms around Tony's neck. The kid was ridiculously light as Tony stood and turned his back on the Avengers, striding from the gym. He chose to ignore the, was that a child, comment made, and instead focused on the kid in his arms. Tony was sitting upright on the hospital bed, Peter fast asleep across his lap when Clint found them. The archer gave Tony a smirk before his face fell. How's the kid? Tony carded his fingers through Peter's curls. He'll be back to swinging around Queens in no time. Clint nodded, looking relieved. I'm sorry. You didn't know, Tony said slowly. But I was aiming for him, Clint said. I didn't know he was just a kid. And if he hadn't been, Tony asked, arching a brow, would that have made a difference? Clint was silent for a moment before he bowed his head in acknowledgement. Everything that happened. We can't just sweep that under the rug. But we can work through it. As a team. Maybe you should all start by apologising. Tony jumped at Peter's words and looked down to see the kid's eyes were open. He hadn't realised Peter was awake. And maybe say thank you for all the work Mr. Stark did to getting the accords to what they are now, Peter continued. You wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. Tony carded his fingers through Peter's curls. Spider kids who went into anaphylactic shock should be asleep. Don't know what you're talking about, Peter closed his eyes. I am asleep. Tony snorted and Clint chuckled softly under his breath. Kid's right, Clint said, squaring his shoulders. I owe you an apology. And a thank you. Later, Tony said. He didn't want it to be in front of the kid, and Tony needed time to be able to fully accept it. Clint seemed to understand, and he gave a nod to Tony. Feel better, kid. Sorry about the arrows. Peter gave a lazy thumbs up, and with a chuckle, Clint left them. Tony continued to scratch his nails across Peter's scalp, and he sighed softly. You don't need to find my battles, kid. This isn't something you need to get involved in. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm asleep, Peter mumbled into Tony's chest. Tony huffed a laugh and shook his head. I'll always have your back, Mr. Stark, Peter promised, his voice firm. Tony looked down to see Peter staring at him. His heart clenched and he smiled down at the kid. Thanks, kid. I wouldn't trust anyone else to look out for my back, apart from Rody. He's awesome, Peter sighed, settling back down onto Tony's chest. Tony grinned as he stared down at his kid. He wasn't sure how he'd managed to find the kindest, most generous kid in Queens, but he would be forever grateful that Peter came into his life.